Entrepreneurs David Fannin and Sean Moore are next in the den. They're hoping to secure investment for their range of collapsible camping products. But will the Dragons be able to see it as a money-making opportunity? Hello, Dragons. My name is David, and this is Sean, and we are the directors and owners of Sorcet Limited. Today, we are here looking for an investment of £150,000 in return for 15% of our new company, Collapse. Sorcet is a product design and manufacturing business that has been established for more than eight years. We specialise in taking people's ideas, turn them, turning them into reality, and ultimately supplying the end product. In recent years, we've started to develop our own collapsible camping products, which is where Collapse was born. Collapse is a brand that de develops lifestyle and fashion appeal. It's been developed to target a large target audience, including, um, inclu including, sorry guys, I've just lost my slides. The campers. Its main target user audience is for young professionals, people with families and young children, festival goers, glampers, and caravanners. It's aimed for the fashion conscious consumer that wants style, quality, and design. Currently, there are three products in manufacture uh, which are aimed at the gardening and camping sectors, with a further eight products in development. Over the last 18 months, we've sold 65,000 units across the three products. And we've had strong overseas interest, and including interest from a large UK department store and a large UK camping distributor. We'd now like to demonstrate the watering can. You twist it into the upright position, remove the components from the lid, like so. as simple as that. Thank you for listening. We would now like to give you one of the watering cans and any questions you may have. Just before you do that, um, Sean, just want to make sure, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Just sorry, the, um, <laughs> I know inside out, which is the pressure of the day got, uh, got to the presentation. OK. A nervous start for entrepreneurial duo David Fannin and Sean Moore. You, Peter, I know your favourite colour is purple. Thank you very much. They're asking for £150,000 for a 15% share in their range of collapsible camping products. Peter Jones demonstrated some undragon like sympathy over their rather awkward pitch. But will he be as kind about their products? Why on earth would you want to go away and pack a watering can if you're staying in a campsite? Isn't that the job of the owner of the campsite to water their own flowers? I think the watering can's aimed at slight, a slightly different uh, consumer or, or demographic. The, the watering can's more about loft living, apartment living, where houses are tight on space, whereas the camping and caravan products are aimed, obviously, where space is, is really premium and needed. OK, and is this a patentable product? We do have a UK patent pending on the watering can. And what does that cost compared to a normal watering can? The watering can you've got at the moment is £25 retail. So a normal watering can can be anywhere from, I suppose, five, five pound. Uh, you can pay up to fifty pound for a watering can, depending, you know, what, what, what it is. But why would I buy this then at twenty five pounds when I can buy a watering can for five? Yeah, basically, people are buying it because if they want something a bit different. It's not just about the, the the collapsibility of it either. It's more about the aesthetic and the the functionality of it, the robustness of it. People are wanting a quality product that they're just going to buy once rather than leaving a watering can kicking about the garden. People love the quality of it. Can we just get an understanding of where the business is? Can you just tell me what your last year's accounts look like in terms of revenue and sales and profit? Yeah. Well, in, in terms of uh, source it, uh, which includes the collapse, we did one million last year. With, in uh, sales? In, in sales, with a, um, a net of uh, 40,000. And what was the gross? Uh, 450. So out of that one million, Split down the sales. 200,000 was for collapse. OK. You're doing quite well as a business. We're doing OK, yeah, yeah. 
After that very shaky start, David and Sean's healthy figures seem to have pulled their pitch back on track. Now, Deborah Meaden wants to pick up on the protectability of their inventions. Um, I think it's a really neat little product. Can I ask you, you say you've got a patent on it, so can you actually pick that up and show me what is the... which bit you've actually got protected? We have got these component parts in the pattern, but the main part and strength in the pattern is the under, handle on the underside and the, the point that there's no handle on the back that allows the mechanics of it to collapse. So, I have to say, it is beautifully designed, but you're saying the, the only thing you can really protect is this handle on the bottom. But why do you need that handle on the bottom? Because you pick it up with this handle on the top. You need to cantilever the, you need to just cantilever the water. Can't, out. can't you just do that? See, I've got my pattern already. To, to be honest, you know, we're focusing more on the design rights because it's the overall look that is uh, the strength of this range. So where, that patent, where does that sit? Who owns the patent? Well, it, it's all been registered uh, in, in, in Sorset. Guys, can I ask you, Sorset, what happens? Do designers come to you with an idea and then you create it? Sometimes they do that, yeah. Um, generally, it's existing people with the product that they want us to then control and manuf manufacture for them. Maybe they need some design input there as well. So, basically, so David and I's background is is product development for supply to retail. So you then decided that you wanted to take something of your own and do what you do for other people. Exactly that, yeah. So you're looking for an investment in Source It or Collapse? Collapse. Collapse. Right. We've also got a, another partner. He's come out of the business. He's, he's basically for retirement. He still owed some money. So as part of that, he's, we've come up with an agreement where he's got the IP. And once we pay him that money, we'll get the IP back. Right. So, OK, this is, so this, this, is, this, is, yeah. this is important stuff because what we've started off by saying, there's a business here that's turning over a million pounds. It's making £40,000 worth of profit. Yeah. Actually, that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at a new business that's turned over £200,000 that doesn't yet have... It might have access to its IP, but you've physically got to pay for that. How much have you got to pay for that IP? £280,000. £280,000? Correct. ..to get the IP into this new business? We, we, yeah, yeah, simply, yeah, yeah. But I can completely understand why you didn't say that up front. A tetchy exchange as Deborah Meaden uncovers David and Sean don't own the intellectual property to their collapsible range. And with a huge debt to be paid to get it back, the dragons are not amused. David, Sean, let me just get my head around this as well. Source it is a company. Yep. So, do you have a company called Collapse Limited? Not yet. So there's no company called Collapse Limited? Not yet. So it's not even a subsidiary within Source Limited? No. Not yet. No. So why didn't you come in and ask for an investment in Source Limited? Because of the complexities of yeah, the, uh, the finances arrangement. That's, we, we thought, you know, ring fencing, the collapse, the giving you guys an opportunity to invest in a clean company. We, we've agreed to pay £5,000 back a month. It's interest-free and it's flexible terms. And once uh, we could then look at sub it... That's lovely to hear all that, but it doesn't belong to the company you want £150,000 for. You're making it worse. Ah! Sorry. Guys, I can't... No, can, let me finish, because you've just made it... OK. ...impossible. You seem like nice guys, but I can't invest. OK. I'm out. The complex structure of the business has led to a frustrated Deborah Meaden exiting any potential deal. Will the other dragons be able to see past the entrepreneur's financial bombshell? It's collapsed, isn't it, this pitch? I think that it's, it's really disappointing, because I think the product is quite neat. But the sad part is that I think that this business is almost worthless. You're in a big hole. You've made it impossible to invest, so unfortunately I'm out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
you came in here and you said you've turned over a million pounds, my ears prick up and I'm thinking, oh, this is genius. And then slowly but surely, it's a bit like a watering can, it's slightly empty now. Okay. I want to wish you luck, but it's not something I want to invest in, so okay, I'm afraid you. I'm thank out. You. Well, Deborah said you're, you're nice guys and you come across that way, but I don't know if you're taking the mic. Right. I really don't. I, I think this is so bizarre, so unreal. You know, I don't want to get involved in it, so I'm out. Okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. So that makes four dragons with a damning assessment of David and Sean's investment offer. And it looks like Piers Linney has also reached a conclusion. I think you've come in with an impossible structure. OK. For anyone to ever get their head around writing a cheque. OK. But that must have crossed your mind. Oh, so absolutely, yeah. You know, we, we know it's a complex situation. And as I say, we... The, we... But, but you didn't come out and say, hi, right, Dragon's got a bit of a complex situation. This is what it looks like. This is how we need to sort it out. This is why we need your money. How does that sound? It was all a bit sort of... Well, we I had mean, to really dig the pitch, together. It was always in the pitch to be completely... Transparent it wasn't about the situation. I, I don't buy it. Um, I'm out. Thank you for your time. So that's it for David and Sean as Piers Linney pours cold water on their dreams of a dragon investor. They leave the den with nothing. What a disaster. Huh? Complete disaster. Complete disaster. Well, that was either incredibly naive or they were hiding that because that wasn't an open ditch. I think they were naive. We knew they were going to dig deep and the debt in the business would come out, but you have to come out with a pitch and be positive about your pitch. I think uh, the debt within the business overshadowed the products that were on offer.